Okay, let's just see about this. Sound on, vision on. Okay, so from the other videos, you'll have probably worked out that it's day two of week 12. And from the title screen, I hope that you read that, I put those little thumbnails together with uh, different backgrounds every week so you can tell the weeks apart. So yeah, ran pretty much 5k, um, at just over three miles. Probably could have run another couple of hundred yards, but I kind of got the alert when it said three miles. Ooh, so done that. Did the circuit training portion, which was horrendous, as you've seen if you've watched that video. Rendered that. Well, it's rendering as I speak, and I'm out here now. But then when I finished my run, it was uh, very much a case of... Uh, oh, I forgot to turn on the voice recorder. I'm hoping, just double checking the uh, sound levels. Yep, that seems to be fine. Oh. And uh, this week I'm planning to do a review of all the kit that I used to film these, as, and I'll put that in the bonus video playlist. It's not really the Agogi, but I'm pretty sure some of you um, will be interested. And definitely, uh, you know, the people that paid for it... Oh, falling over in the woods again. Certainly deserve to see how I spent the money in a bit more detail. So yeah, expect some Ashen style couch videos really soon. Hmm. But this is just a short woodland wander video to make up for the fact that uh, sadly I messed up the audio on the thing. Yeah. So yeah. That was not a good bit to wander over. Yeah. So. Uh, I need to sort that out. Let's do the. Uh, no. We all follow, and I'll have a. An attempt at wandering a slightly different way through the woods. Yeah. <sighs> so despite all the weird connecting bits, and the fact there seems to be some weird interference whenever I plug the purple panda directly into the uh, <sighs> monitoring system, <coughs> the rig is very usable. Uh, trainers were not a good idea. Uh, have a wander up here. So yeah, so my 3D printer did not arrive today, but it would have been early if it had. So tomorrow's video has got to be either shot very early or uh, kept short. I will endeavour to get out of bed early enough to go for my interval run. <sighs> I've just had a very large brunch after the exercise. Yeah, so it's coming up to two o'clock in the afternoon. I thought I'd record a, a little bit for you. A bit of a wonder. So yeah, Ooh, so we're doing really well, thank you for your help and your views and your input, it's really nice, I really like getting emails from people, so if you've got any questions at all about rangers or urban agogi, you can either email me at the urban agogi address or I think the uh, V4V address is perfectly usable, Ooh, so yeah. Good to, it's always good to hear from people. 
but I'm ridiculously excited about that 3D printer turning up. Whew. But yeah. Technically, that's part of the olden way. And it does give me the impression, you know, there is a there is a woodland way of wandering out on this part of the olden way. This is the way out to Oldham. And uh, it goes through these woods. But I did, order, I did order and I have received the Ordnance Survey map for the majority of the Oldham Way. So I need to figure out a colour that's going to stand up out against all the other colours. And I'm thinking a bright yellow heavy duty highlighter to cover the Oldham Way. And uh, probably a magnifying glass because it's all pretty small print on those things. They're like 1 to 250, 25,000 I think. But if you're planning a walk and you're in the UK, I mean, I know the, uh, the Americans definitely have a USGS survey system, which is pretty amazing. And uh, so when you, if you get one of those maps, I mean, they're all, they're all really printed quite tiny, but they are accurate and they're kept accurate. So I've got this real yen to go wandering. I know that's going to get supplanted tomorrow or Thursday because if that 3D printer turns up I will be uploading seriously major loads of videos especially for my first print so uh, maybe I can encourage people to get into it because I think it's, it's seriously it's like the 21st century equivalent of the Gandhi spinning wheel theory where he was like you know we make things for other people not ourselves which I think was an important bit of uh, Heinlein's attitude in the moon in the heart is a harsh mistress he basically got a fiefdom on the moon and everybody wants to rebel but you know the primary primary thing really that Heinlein talks about I mean the war is pretty incidental once you work out you can throw rocks down a gravity well you've more or less won that war. Well, you know, the only thing that would make it continue is people's inability to believe that you could keep doing it, you know. So yeah, Heinlein was a smart person. And I, I learned a new lesson from uh, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress and it's, it will stand you in great stead because it's what I used to do on uh, mathematics equations and problems and stuff like that and matrices and quadratic equations. If a problem looks insoluble, do the bits of it that you can do and then take a look at the overall shape of the problem again. And that's a very mathematical way of looking at things, but it really does work. You know, pick a big project, start working on the little bits. Once you've got some little bits nailed down, the other bigger bits may seem a little bit more solvable, or you will have to add time to just let your, your subconscious have a crack at it. So yeah, everybody should read Heinlein. I mean, generally speaking, he, all his books contain lessons and it's something that uh, Spider J. Robinson definitely picked up on with uh, his unfinished book that he only found out about after Heinlein's death of um, Variable Star. Variable Star is an amazing book. Gives you a little bit of science, gives you a little bit of an input, tells you a few things, but then teaches you how to meditate and get along with people. Teaches you about, you know, responsibility and all sorts of crazy stuff. But The Moon is a Harsh Mistress is basically a retelling of the American War of Independence in 1776 and how that worked. And, uh, yeah. And it's a bit on the nose, but it is a thoroughly enjoyable book and it's got lots of sad bits in it. I'm not going to spoil it for you if you haven't read it. If you have read it, you already know the plot. But yeah, go get that. Um, the best audiobook reading, as with Starship Troopers and uh, Variable Star, if you can find them in the normal places where people find things on the internet. There are versions read by Loyal Cole, Lloyd Cole, um, and it's by Blackstone Audiobooks. They are fantastic renderings. If I could figure out a way to give them some money without them trying to sue me, I would. 
But yeah, I was lucky enough to listen to an awful lot of Heinlein. Tunnel in the Sky is also good. I didn't think there was an audiobook for the longest time, but there is. And it's relatively easy to find. So yeah. And uh, if you keep um, an eye on things, YouTube has this policy of making downloads as difficult as possible, but within usually the three days of your, your YouTube download are not working, you go into your browser and look for a download a program, there'll be something new that circumvents that. You know, I don't understand why they've got this thing about downloading MP3s. If you really, really wanted it, you could just record the audio out. You know, record the audio out at three or four times, leave it running, then use Audacity to slow it back down again. It's not hard. Yeah, it's a shame, no, uh, you know, there, aren't, there don't seem to be as many as things like William Gibson books. But I find that Gibson books, although they're entertaining and they have interesting plots and they talk about technology and the way certain aspects of it can be weaponized, um, they don't really teach you anything. Whereas I, believe, I really do think that Heinlein still does. Oh, let's switch this round. So yeah. Let's get this across. Yeah, there we go. So yeah. That's uh, pretty much it. But yeah, you know, whilst we're doing all these mad, turning ourselves into super beings, you know, let's think about that. You know, let's go and listen to some Heinlein while you're becoming more than you thought you would be. And that's been the great, greatest thing about Urban Agogi. I feel more capable. Which is why I'm taking such pains to record all, no, uh, ironically, pun intended, to record all the pain and the hassle of it. You know, I'm not going to candy coat it. It's work. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it. I really didn't like, feel like doing the exercises today or feel like doing them last Sunday. But I did them because, you know, that's how progress happens. And I, and I guarantee you, however much you don't want to do those exercises or you don't want to go for a run or you don't want to go for a long walk or you don't want to get up off the couch or you don't want to not have a pizza you know when when you achieve any of those things and every single step of that every run every bit of interval training every bit of circuit training every long walk you know all of those you feel much better having done them by a factor of five than you feel apprehension about doing them. So the apprehension about doing them is a small thing compared to the feeling that you get after you've done it. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more feedback from people that are just starting out on that. And I'd definitely like to hear from anybody that's downloaded the Army Fitness course and is in the way of doing it. And if I can get the 3D printer up and running in the way that I hopefully can, and I can manage to figure out how to print in the more bendy silicone type materials and I can get dual colour printing working. If I can get that going, the first 10 people to complete the army training on the Agogi will get from me for free a, uh, a rubber morale patch to say that they've done it. And if anybody out there is feeling super artistic and they want to send a, um, a drawing of what they think that patch should look like, and if you're super artistic and super technical and you can work out a 3D printing STL file, so I can just run it off with the dual color extruder and all that sort of gubbins, you know, I'll send you an Urban Agoge patch as well. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? So the first 10 people to do it, providing I can get it working. And if not, I'll, uh, I'll do, do what I can to put together, you know, at least some kind of badge that we can get out there. Maybe like a, a, a 3D printed challenge coin or something. So yeah, and I'll pay postage. 
or if you've got a 3D printer I'll send you the STL file if it's feasible but yeah imagine bumping I mean if Ego Boost has nothing on how I would feel if I bumped into someone with one of those on their bag <sighs> so yeah you know and I you know I, I'm relishing all the all this input I really loved um, direct co currents comment the other day that he sent in saying you know how about focusing on contentment rather than happiness it was bang on you know but it's you know when you when you spend some of your time being depressed or just dragging yourself through life with no real goals I mean, I don't mean goals that other people set you, or financial goals, or job goals, or temporary goals. Mm. Hiya. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I'll get a cut there. Yeah, I mean, you know, goals that you set yourself, things that you want to do. And I'm starting to get more into exploring areas and having a look down things and building up my mental map because exploring is fun it doesn't have to be some, somewhere that nobody's been although definitely the olden way I don't think anybody's walked that in a decade so I might make that my personal project see if I can come up with a format for filming those I mean Dean and I did the uh, first third relative to my house I want to go back and do the next third that will take about a day and the final third another day but I'm really into the idea of knowing where all that stuff is because it's really nice. There's loads of it through woodland that's really attractive. And it's kind of like a treasure hunt. And, you know, things like map navigation. You know, if I hadn't done the olden way, I wouldn't have a detailed ordnance survey paper map of where I live. Do get that. You know, definitely go and get at least a large scale map of where you are so you can work out where stuff is and if you don't want to well I'd say you can get Osmand and look at where you are that's a really good Android app but um, you know there's nothing quite like a paper map that's one of the things that digital mapping has not remotely done well you know it doesn't replace a good paper map and I might even well buy it, try and buy the laminated version once I've done the olden way, but I bought the paper version so I could scrawl on it. Whew. So yeah. It's all good. And uh, hopefully also tomorrow my uh, new PC, PC case will turn up. And it's one of my long-term goals to get the studio sorted for future Urban Agoge projects. I want to do some cooking. So do let me know if you think that uh, a healthy food cooking thing would be good. Because I can assure you, none of it will take more than 15 minutes. So yeah, any suggestions, any ideas, any comments, any responses, send them in. That's what comments are for. Oh, it's cool getting comments. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to manage a night shift tonight. But yeah, so that's our, my short making up for being a, an idiot and failing to do the audio recording video. So that's an unprecedented part three. Oh. I have to go and make up another thumbnail. But yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching.